So what we're taking a look at today is another one of our optimization problems. And remember these just take some playing around with uh, to try and work out how all the formulas will work and how the derivatives are going to work. But fundamentally, remember, what we're trying to do is we're trying to optimize. And optimize meant we're either trying to find the maximum or the minimum of something. And you get the maximum or the minimum of something by getting a function and taking the derivative and setting it to zero because maxes and mins happen where we have horizontal tangents on the function. So that's what we have to do. Um, in order to get there, uh, you need to get, you need a function and that function has to just have those two variables in it, right? Otherwise it's not, it's not a function anyway. Um, and that's often the tricky part or one of the tricky parts I should say in these types of questions is getting to a point where you only have one variable. For example, the way this starts, I haven't even read the whole thing yet, but the question at the end says what height H and base R will maximize the volume of a cylinder. So I'm trying to maximize the volume of the cylinder. And I'm given some other information about it at the top. But fundamentally, our problem is, can you get the maximum volume of something? So the most important formula is this one. That's the formula for the volume of a cylinder. You might have had to look that up. Um, volume is pi r squared times h. And the problem, as I say, is there's too many variables. The v is fine. Pi is just a number, so it doesn't matter. But the r and the h, uh, that's too many variables. I need to just have one of those. So we need other information in the question that's going to allow us to cut down on, on how many variables we have. And that's where the first sentence comes in. It says a container in the shape of a right circular cylinder. Uh, right circular is usually not written. Uh, we're just talking about a cylinder here. Uh, our right cylinder means it's not tipped, but you don't find too many cylinders that are tipped. So there's our, there's our cylinder. Um, it says it has no top, no top. Um, so this is, I can't draw no top on a cylinder particularly well, but that that's empty, okay? There's nothing there. There is a bottom. And we're told that the surface area of that cylinder is three pi square feet, which is weird, but it's actually a number that'll help us. So that's why we chose it. Now the surface area for a cylinder, uh, you probably have to look this one up. Surface area is normally two pi r squared. Uh, and that represents the two circles plus two pi r h, and that represents the label, or the, something's called the lateral surface area. It's, is that part going around the outside of the, the cylinder. That would be the formula for, for a regular cylinder, but this one has no top. And as I said, that first part of the formula, the two pi r squared, it's two because there's a circle on the top and a circle on the bottom. So for us, we have to get rid of that two. That's the formula for the surface area of this cylinder that we see. And we know that it has a surface, a surface area of three pi. The square feet really isn't that important. So I'm going to sub that in. I'm going to put three pi right there. That's equal to pi r squared plus two pi r h. That's our helper equation. That's what I used to call it back in grade 10. I call that one our helper equation. The blue one is our, our important equation. That's the one that we're trying to maximize. So we want to use that helper equation, the one in green, to get rid of a variable. And it's got both R's and H's in it. So we want to use that equation to isolate either R or H. And technically, you could do either one. You could do the R or the H. But I, I think you can tell it's going to be way easier to get the H by itself. Uh, there's R's in two different spots, and what's worse, the first R is R squared, and the second one is just uh, a linear term, just R. So we want to get the H by itself in this case. So I'm going to try, I'm going to rearrange it. I'm just going to bring the pi R squared over to the other side. And then we'll divide both sides by the 2 pi R H. And so that gives us our h value right there. Now that we've got our, our height in terms of r, I can go back to that important equation, which was the volume equation. And this time I'm going to write it as v in terms of r. 
So instead of f of x, it's v at r. Um, and my formula, well, it's still pi r squared, right? But now instead of h, I'm going to put 3 pi minus pi r squared all over 2 pi r. And that now is a formula that just has r's in it. So that's going to be quite a bit better for us. Now, you might have noticed back there in the the green formula, the one I put in red, or put the rectangle around, um, I could have simplified that a little bit. Um, it's got a whole bunch of pies in it that could have canceled. And I purposely didn't, uh, just because I knew it was going to happen. So I guess I cheated a little bit because I, I knew it was going to happen here. Uh, there's a pie on the top and a pie on the bottom. So those are going to cancel from there. Uh, there's also an r and an r squared. So those are going to cancel here. So I'm not taking the derivative yet. I'm just simplifying it. There's still an r in front of the bracket. And then, well, there's a 3 pi minus pi r squared. And those are all over 2, right? Um, which I can do just a little bit better with. I can distribute the r in. And I'm going to split up that 2 as well so that it's in two different spots. So 3 over 2 pi times r minus pi over 2 times r, that would be r cubed, right? So there's my function simplified. That's as good as I can do for just the volume in terms of the radius. But if I'm trying to find the maximum, I want to take the derivative of that. So v prime, uh, r's are variable, right? So 3 over 2 pi is the constant in front. So the derivative of that first one is just 3 over 2 pi. Uh, the second one, we'd have to drop the 3 down. So it's minus 3 pi over 2 r squared. Look okay, I think so. Um, and we're trying to find horizontal tangents. We're trying to find a maximum. So we're going to set it to 0. Out of space. I'm going to bring the that second term over to this side, and you can see there are lots of good things are going to happen, right? There's a, a three over two pi on both sides of the equation, so that's going to go, and that's going to go. Technically, I suppose we're dividing both sides by three pi over two. And you're left with just r squared equals one. Um, if you want to think of that really the long way, you'd multiply both sides by 2, divide both sides by 3, divide both sides by pi. But either way, you end up with r squared equals 1, which technically then means that r is plus or minus 1. Uh, remember, there are the two solutions for that. But like we talked about last day, um, those are solutions to the function, right? Those are solutions to that equation right there. Or excuse me. Those are solutions to this equation, which was the derivative of this one. That means those are the solutions that apply to the, the formula, but not necessarily the context. So the context was this r actually represented the radius of a circle. So r equals negative 1 is inadmissible. It doesn't make any sense. So therefore, uh, r equals 1 will give us the maximum. So we found our r value. I think the question asked for the height as well, didn't it? Um, and I'm not going to score it. I wrote it down here. The height was equal to 3 pi minus pi r squared over 2 pi, oops, 2 pi r, good fix. And if I sub in 1 for r, we would get, what, 3 pi minus, uh, that's just pi, divided by uh, just 2 pi on the bottom. So 2 pi over 2 pi, h is just 1. That's not very exciting, actually. Um, 
but I've, I've got my dimensions there. R is 1 and H is 1. Those are the dimensions that will give us the maximum volume. Uh, question never specifically said what is the maximum volume, but we could get that easily enough too, right? Uh, that's your formula for volume. Radius was 1, height was 1, so our maximum volume is actually pi. Uh, I think it was square feet, wasn't it? So that's how you take on that problem. Um, notice again that the tricky parts, I think, were coming up with a formula in the first place because we had to do a little bit of rearranging to get there. And this one was a little bit tricky, I suppose, to solve. Um, but what I think you'll notice as you try more and more optimization problems is that there's different uh, different tricks that you have to use from time to time as, as far as the actual solving goes. Some of them will be uh, very simple with a nice polynomial and some of them would be quite a bit more difficult. So just be careful at, say, this stage here where we're actually trying to, to solve the equations.